Hey, everyone. All right, we're going to do a quick reminder, refresher on job satisfaction. And I'm pulling the information for this mini lecture from the textbook by Colquitt and colleagues called Organizational Behavior, Improving Performance and Commitment in the Workplace. Uh, so job satisfaction, what is it? Why is it so important? And what factors um, drive it? And how does it impact everyday work? That's what we're going to talk about right now. All right, let's see. So why should we care about job satisfaction? Well, it turns out that there is a moderately strong relationship between someone's level of satisfaction with their job and their performance at their job. And there is a even stronger correlation between job satisfaction and commitment. And of course, as organizational psychologists, job performance and org commitment are extremely important outcomes. And so uh, it's worthwhile diving into the intricacies of job satisfaction and how we can improve it. Also, job satisfaction is strongly positively correlated with life satisfaction. And I think that as um, organizational psychologists, we should care not just about the performance of the organization, but we should care about the impact we're having on the employees and, and their satisfaction with their life as well. So this is all to the good. Okay, so we're gonna talk about two theories related to job satisfaction. One is called value percept theory. The other is job characteristics theory. So let's start with value percept theory. So this theory suggests that, uh, and it's captured by this equation, right? The degree to which someone is satisfied is equal to the, the things that they want minus what they have and how important that is to them. So the idea is everybody has values that matter to them, maybe more specifically to them than other people. And if their job is able to help them maximize on those values, then they'll be more satisfied. So I put these five categories of values in order based on what research has shown is the most um, predictive of job satisfaction, which is interesting because pay is number five here. All, all of these are important, but it turns out that pay is the least important of the five when predicting job satisfaction, which is, which is really interesting. Um, but maybe that resonates with some of you. Promotion and promotability is also important, but not as important as the interactions and the social environment people have with their coworkers. Of course, supervision and the quality of the leadership of their direct supervisor is a huge predictor of satisfaction. But ultimately, number one here is the nature and the tasks within our job and how fulfilling that is, is really, um, one of the most important values. Um, there are other values that people have in, in work, that things they look for in work. These are not the only five, although they've been extensively studied, but you can see, you know, you can imagine the degree to which your job allows you to make an impact on the world or the community, uh, maybe your status, the environment, how safe you feel and how beautiful or not it is, and um, and many more. I'm, I'm curious what you all think uh, maybe are some new values that have risen to the top that are maybe more important to workers now than that used to be before COVID. So looking at number one there, the importance of work, um, because it's such a key factor in job satisfaction compared to the others, we're going to spend a little bit more time thinking about that. So that takes us to job characteristics theory. So job characteristics theory is the idea that within the job and the work itself, there are five elements or factors that impact the degree to which someone might be satisfied. And if you um, can fulfill some of these needs, these uh, areas for a person in terms of the way that the work is designed, um, the way that uh, tasks are conceived and, and um, in implemented, then you can increase job satisfaction. So we'll go through them briefly. Variety is the degree to which a job requires a number of different activities. 
um, maybe different skills and talents that you have to use, maybe different variety from day to day. Identity is an uh, interesting one. It's It doesn't have to do with a person's identity. It's the degree to which the job requires completing an identifiable piece of work from beginning to end, uh, rather than just, um, you know, putting one part in a watch and never and, and wrote repetition over and over again, but never being able to see and be involved in the whole process from start to finish. Significance is the degree to which um, someone feels like their job is making a difference for people. Uh, and autonomy is, we're all much more familiar with this now, which I would say might go up to the top of the list in terms of values for workers. Um, it's the freedom, independence you have, maybe where you work, when you work, how you work, but also like the discretion you have in actually making decisions and performing your job. And uh, feedback is also interesting. It's not um, the feedback we're used to thinking of when you know your supervisor gives you feedback on how you're doing. This is actually the degree to which the job itself, the work you're doing, gives you that clear information about how you're performing so um, that you can get real-time feedback and, and adjust and you know how you're doing. You know you're doing a good job or not and what you can improve, but that's different than feedback from a supervisor. So what's important here about job characteristics theory, and I took this image straight from the textbook, is that the first three, variety, identity, and significance, they lead or they are mediated um, they, by meaningfulness of work in the relationship to job satisfaction with the work. So um, if you have more variety, identity with the job and significance, then you'll feel more meaning at work. And autonomy is mediated, the relationship between job satisfaction and autonomy is mediated by responsibility for outcomes. And the feedback to job satisfaction with the work itself relationship is explained through knowledge of results. But there's two things here that uh, moderate these relationships. So knowledge of skill and growth need strength. And those are interesting and just we'll touch on them. So knowledge and skills, the degree to which a person has a strong, um, sorry, the degree of knowledge and skill that a person has is a strong moderator of satisfaction. And the Growth needs strength is uh, the degree to which a person desires to grow on the job, and that can moderate their um, satisfaction. Okay, so it turns out that job satisfaction is not just about the work, the pay, et cetera. It's also that like whether we feel satisfied with something depends also on what's going on inside of us and our emotional states and our moods. So of course, if you can elicit more positive emotions like joy, pride, hope, compassion in your employees, then that will have a positive impact on their satisfaction. Um, and the also opposite is true. Like the you know more negative emotions, maybe um, job satisfaction is impacted negatively. Now we're going to challenge this here with the article that we're reading for this week. So um, it turns out maybe these are not always. Uh, positive emotions lead to more satisfaction and negative emotions lead to less satisfaction. So we're going to, um, recent emotion work and research has, has kind of gotten into some nuance here that the textbook doesn't get into. Um, but there is a concept of, of kind of the degree to which your job requires emotional labor, um, which is really common in service jobs, but also it leads to this idea of surface acting as an example of it which is how much your emotions, you have to pretend or act like you're feeling a certain way that's really not authentic to how you're really feeling. And that can um, cause people to feel dissatisfied with their job. And then uh, emotional contagion is also an interesting concept when thinking about emotions at work, which is uh, kind of the idea that that you can transfer emotional um, valence between employees and things can kind of get out of control pretty quickly, but also maybe it can go in the positive direction. And then it's important here to distinguish between moods and emotions. Emotions are um, kind of immediate, uh, more abrupt, more strong feelings versus moods, which are states 
of feelings that last longer. Maybe they're less mild in intensity and they're not necessarily specifically directed at an event, something that happened. It's just like kind of in the background. This is kind of how I generally feel my mood is at work. And um, this can, these moods can vary along different axes. So the degree to which they're activated versus deactivated and pleasant versus unpleasant. So you could have a mood where um, let's look at uh, happy, cheerful, and pleased. That's a very pleasant feeling, but it's kind of in the middle of like activated versus and aroused versus like deactivated or more inactive. So um, you can see that moods moods have different valences here and levels of pleasantness, which can impact mood, emotion, and all of the theories we just talked about, about the work itself and your values all kind of feed into the degree to which you're satisfied with your job. So uh, employers use, do assess job satisfaction quite frequently in employee surveys. Um, there is a job satisfaction index that's used widely for HR professionals. And um, also it's good to kind of try to get a sense of this with interviews or employee feedback uh, generally to see where people are at, because this can vary over time and uh, within and among individuals. So with that, I am going to uh, sign off and I hope that was a good refresher on job satisfaction.